early Muslim advancements in science and culture laid the cornerstones of the many European movements, such as the Renaissance, the Enlightenment, and modern Western society. As an example, Muslim scientists' contribution to the field of geography was enormous. Before translating Greek books into Arabic, they had already written books about roads and cities for traveling and commerce. The fact that every Muslim is expected to go to Mecca for Hajj pilgrimage at least once in his lifetime made geography even more interesting for them. Those who had to travel to Mecca from afar needed enough information on roads, towns, and geographical features. Yaqubi, for example, wrote the book The Cities, which was translated and published in Europe in 19th century. This book is very important in natural geography. Another example of Muslims' contributions can be seen in the advancements made to the map-making traditions of earlier cultures, particularly the works of the Hellenistic geographer Ptolemy. What Muslim explorers and merchants learned in their travels across the Old World, also known as Afro-Eurasia, was another source of inspiration for Muslim geographers. The prevailing European notion of the Hellenistic period was portrayed as a flat disk floating in the ocean with a hemispherical sky dome above, which formed the premise of early world maps like those of Anaximander. Al-Kharizmi's book on the appearance of the earth was completed in 833 AD. It is a revised and completed version of Ptolemy's geography, which was the most referenced text in Europe at the time. Al-Kharizmi corrected Ptolemy's crude overestimate for the length of the Mediterranean Sea. Also, Muslim geographers at that time had defined the Atlantic and Indian Oceans as open bodies of water, not landlocked seas as Ptolemy had assumed. Al-Biruni, the well-known 10th century polymath who had found the new method of calculating longitude and latitude, developed a new map-making approach by using trigonometric calculations based on the dip angle between a plane and mountaintop, by which he was able to calculate precise measurements of the Earth's circumference. He theorized the existence of a landmass along the vast ocean between Asia and Europe, or what is today known as the Americas. He argued for its existence on the basis of his accurate estimations of the Earth's circumference and Afro-Eurasia's size, which he found spanned only two-fifths of the Earth's circumference, reasoning that the geological processes that gave rise to Eurasia must surely have given rise to lands in the vast ocean between Asia and Europe. He was right, and that land is known today as the continent of Americas.